Hey guys, DMike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We're getting right to the end of Brilliant Diamond. This is actually post-game content. And according to the menu, we are to go to the first floor, so let's do that. I don't really like the game telling me what to do, but I suppose I can. So it appears that Barry has once again tried to get all up on our business. And he wants us to get on a ship with him. Sounds romantic. Also, who calls their child kid? Is my project with Professor Rowan coming along? Have a little investment in my life, Mom. Jeez. You just stay home all day, watching TV. So there's some things you can do in the post game of Diamond and Pearl. Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. And I'm not going to do most of them. And why is that? Well, because I am really kind of burnt out on this game. I think Diamond and Pearl are fine games, but I'm just kind of like, eh, like we beat it. You know, we beat the game off. There's not really a whole lot left to do. You know, there's this whole other like unexplored area that you can do which is there's like a ton of trainers and fights and all this stuff. And I don't know, I, I get it. I, it. It's fun for people, but you know, if I'm being completely honest, I'm probably not gonna really do most of it just because I kind of just don't care. We've done nearly 40 episodes of this Let's Play. This will be episode 40. And I'd like to kind of move on to something different. Not to say that the game ends once you finish the Elite Four, but you know, and there is plenty of post-game content to do. It's not great post-game content, mind you, but you can do it. So I'm going to give you a little taste about some stuff you can do. And I'm not going to go through all of it. I will explain some of it, but I'm probably not going to actually do it. So I apologize for this Let's Play not being comprehensive, but eh, whatever. It is what it is. I've got bigger and better things planned in the future. So this is the boat at Snow Point City you can take. The Bezos Super Yacht. Very exciting, just sailing along. Takes you to the battle zone. And there's Barry and some redheaded boy that we don't know yet. Oh Barry, you don't have the you don't have the legality to do that. I don't know if Barry's actually gonna try to fight us right here. That'd be really unfortunate. And there's this guy whose hair looks like Skittles. And he's going to the volcano, whatever that means. All right. So that's wonderful. I could not care less about literally any of this. All right, so this is Buck. He is one of the post-game trainers. Did you just say zippity dippity? Okay, zero respect for you. No, thank you. Also, there's a battle tower in this game, if you're interested in that. If you want to have some of those experiences, I don't. Not really much of a battle tower-er. The battle frontier in Pokemon Emerald was pretty interesting. I enjoyed that, but in general, it didn't really... You know, the, the concept of it didn't really rustle my jimmies, so... Did not mean to talk to that Torchic, that's okay. Wonderful. So things are changing. There's more opportunities. What's the, with them calling everything eccentric? Stop being old. Get out of here. No one cares about your dumb opinions. So this little area, we are currently up in the northeast portion of the map. And there's all these different spots you can go. This episode will probably be centered around doing that. Whereas... The remaining episode, I'm thinking I'm only going to do one more, possibly two more, because I really want to get onto the next project, but um, we'll explore around here a little bit, and then I will explain kind of the more kind of OG post-game stuff that would have been available in the DS versions of this game before I actually spend time... 
I guess, doing those things, and then, then, then we'll do it, and it'll, it'll be wonderful. I don't know if any of... Ooh, man, my other team is severely underleveled. Oh, boy. Well, let's throw them in there for fun, because they have not gotten any action in a long time. And I, like I said, I did, I did promise that I would swap the team out. Everybody's probably going to get nuked, if I had to guess. But, hey, that's half the fun of playing Pokemon, isn't it? Watching your team get trounced over and over and over again. We'll keep Charlie in there as the sole veteran. But yeah, 13 level discrepancy. Are these uh, people I can fight? Okay, do not care about the battle tower at all? What's this way? Is there anything this way? Nope, just some berries. Okay. I do believe there are some trainers here in the, quote, fight area. I don't know if they're related to Battle Tower. What is this? The Battle Park? Yeah, I, I've i never done any of this, so... We'll get a point card. This is very creepy, having all these women with their green hair and identical outfits. Yeah, I don't know what the Battle Park is, and I think this is probably all related to... Or I don't know what any of this means. Oh, this is all battle battle tower stuff, and I don't care about that. Not to say that I'm disparaging people who do enjoy battle tower extravaganzas. It's just not really a thing for me. Regular old battling is fine. Battle towers are okay. I'm like I'm not really into the whole min maxing meta game thing. EVs, IVs, all that. I'm not really into that. I tried it a little bit. I didn't really care for it, so I think that this, we actually need to fill up the national decks. So that's actually what I will do today. We're going to fill up the national decks. And in order to do that, first we're going to go and visit Celestic Town. I actually missed five Pokemon on my journey. And I shouldn't say missed. There's actually only really one of them that I quote missed. The rest of them aren't really misses. They're things that you can do at some point in your journey, and I just haven't done them yet. Okay, apparently she's not here. Actually, this is something you can do, and you, if you want to complete the Sinnoh decks, the 150 Pokemon, you will want to visit Celestic Town. I don't know which house she lives in. I'm just going to explore all of them. You will want to... Nope, that's not it. You'll want to visit the old lady who was inside those ruins there, or whatever you want to call that. Cynthia's grandma, I think. And she should show you the other legendary you don't have. So in this case, we caught Dialga. This is Palkia. This is the legendary prominent in Shining Pearl. So... There you go. That will take care of that Pokedex entry. You obviously cannot catch Palkia in this game. You'll have to have it traded to you. So that's one. Now we still have four other Pokemon that we need to find. And the... Where is it? We need to head to the Selassian Ruins, which I don't know... Where? I don't remember where any of that is. No. It was in the one place with the stuff. Slossian Town. Probably there. That's a good that's a good uh good place to go look for it. So one of the Pokemon, which I was a little confused that they put it in here, and that it's considered to be part of the Pokedex. I don't actually know how to get to it, but we will figure it out. There's the Lost Tower. I don't think that, that counts, but there are. What is back here? What is what what is this nonsense? What is going on here? I don't think I even looked at this. There's a lot of this game that I probably skipped over and people are potentially beating their heads against their desks because I did it. Okay, don't care about that. Also don't care about that. This episode could just be called D Mike's Apathy, because that's kind of where we're at. I just want to. Show off as much as I... Okay. Well, I wanted to get over there. I don't know... How do I do that? Everything here is, like, kind of walled off. Am I stuck? 
Okay. So there's a lot of... A lot of those cliffs. Is there a way to... Get past them some... Oh, okay. It's a little bit of a maze. Not an amazing one, but... Alright, how do I get in there? What in the good gosh darn is happening here? I'm assuming that... These ledges are corresponding to something, but... Because I need to get into that spot. Those are actually the, the ruins of... Of Mention. It does not appear that the game wants me to go into them. I don't know if I'm missing something, or... Probably just being a ding-dong, as per usual. This episode is probably just going to... Encapsulate... The... Remaining Pokemon that I missed. How do I get in there from here? Is this not... Why is that not the entrance? Like, there's only one other... Is that the exit? It looks like that's the way to get in there, but there's not really a path. This is... Oh. Ah. Hey, everybody. Look at me. All right. So these are the Slossian ruins, as you can see. These are some directions. If you can't read them, it says uh, top right, lower left, top right, top left, top left, lower left. I'm not going to actually explore these. These ruins are just a location with some weird tilt shift going on. I just want to... Okay, thank you, child. I just want to capture an unknown or see it. That's kind of my goal. Or maybe I actually have to follow the rules. What did that say? Let's go back and read it. So, top right, lower left. Top right, top left, top left, low. I'm not going to remember that. Okay. Top right. Nope. I've already I've already done it. Yeah, I don't know if I have to like unlock something to get the unknown to pop out. But that's what I want to see. I could have come here a long time ago. I did not. Oh, there's a person I can fight in here. I would love to just see an unknown. This guy probably has like level 10 Pokemon, which is going to be awesome because I probably was supposed to come here a long time ago and I forgot. Perfect opportunity to level up my other... Yeah. This is going to be brutal. I apologize in advance for this not being exciting. All of these should be Oko's one-hit knockouts for all of you nerds out there. It's very exciting. I don't actually know how to trigger the unknown if I have to do any sort of you know, if I have to follow the rules of what it was saying, we will find out, but we're gonna gain minimal experience in the process as we fight this guy. Okay, so, I mean, everything is awesome. We're doing great, this is wonderful. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves. Hopefully you're having a good springtime. So, we're doing awesome, I mean, Hopefully we don't actually have to do much. I just want to see a an unknown. Any of them would be great. I don't care which one it is. Hopefully I don't get super lost and I would love to be able to use the escape rope in the process. Are there unknown in here? I hope there are. I haven't seen it yet. Not sure what the encounter rate is. If at all, do, uh, there we go. Is this one? Wonderful. Okay. Looks like the letter PP, the big old P. The type of unknown is irrelevant. I'm not going to catch it because I don't care. I care about you guys. I care about you viewers. Don't worry. That hasn't changed. So let's see. We have an escape rope. Should have a couple. Yes. Can we use them? Wonderful. Okay, so we're done. We are finished. Okay. 
we will do this spin a to get out of there. And we're missing three Pokemon. So the three Pokemon, spoilers, are the lake Pokemon. Which, um, I actually should check my items here. I don't remember exactly what I have. I got some Dusk Balls. I could probably use more. Let's go ahead and fly back to, where, where are they? Snow Point City. We'll start there. We'll start at Snow Point. That Mars should have plenty of Dusk Balls. Not feeling particularly good about any of those encounters with said lake Pokemon, but it's the lake trio. You need to see them for your Pokedex. And we will buy many Dusk Balls, at least 47 of them we could. Don't need that many. And there may be some cuts in this episode, depending on how these fights potentially go. I'm also a little unsure of how I want to do. Nope, I don't want to save. Nope. So as you can see, there are three that we need to see that are left, and those are the three that I was referring to. Uh, actually, I do want to have Steven because the addition of a the status effect is really good. It does up your odds of being successful. Also, apparently, having Pokemon that are higher level than the one you're after helps increase your odds of catching it. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I read that somewhere recently, and it just pertains to this game, and I think that that's, that's bogus. I don't know. I don't make up the rules. I think the rules a lot of the time are dumb. But anyway, here we go. One of three. We'll do this, and then I'll show you what your reward is for getting all 150 Pokemons. So there we go. First of three, you can come here after you have beaten Cynthia. Actually, maybe you can do it before, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to save because I don't want to accidentally ruin my opportunity. So here is number one of the three lake Pokemon. This is Yuxi, with this very scrotal head, very creepy looking. Fantastic battle music, though. And we're gonna do all three of these fights in this episode. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I've never really big, been a big fan of the Lake Trio. I think they're all kind of strange and... I don't know. This kind of really don't do... Okay, Steven, that's, that's a little too much. But thankfully they're all level 50, so... And I believe they're all Psychic type. That's what I remember. They're all pretty strong though, so you have to be careful with that. It can make things a little difficult, but if you have a status effect, that should really help. And having a Pokemon that is higher level than them, apparently, according to the thing I read, which could be wrong, feel free to challenge me, is the best way to catch them, I guess. You gotta put a little mustard on it to really do it. But we're gonna get all three, and if we get all three, it basically unlocks the rest of the game. And the rest of the game, the things that I referred to as being unlocked are not really things that I really care about. But I will at least explain what they are. There are many legendaries in this game that you can catch. I'm not going to do that, but I will at least tell you how to get them. For those of you who are interested, I want you all to have a fair opportunity to get all the Pokemons you want. I just remember the Dialga fight and I'm thinking to myself, you know, as somebody recording this content, how little interest I have in doing that. There's just so many, there there are just so many of these heckin' legendaries in this game that I'm just like, eh, whatever. Not really doing it for me. I mean, I, I will tell you where they are, I'll tell you how to get them. And if you're interested, feel free to do so. The only downside to all these fights is like, I know that for a comprehensive Let's Play, you would want to have somebody like really put in some work and edit and do all these crazy things with these these Pokemon but it's just I don't really feel it's particularly compelling to watch the same fights over and over and over again there's not really a whole lot you can do with making a a legendary capture attempt novel it's all kind of the same so this is what it is this is literally rinse and repeat I probably will just show you this one 
and then I'll show you the the capturing of the other two just to for brevity there's no need to really make this a big deal for all three all all of the fights are going to be identical I tell you I tell you what I tell you what I don't know it's been a nice time to have Miguel because now we don't really have any I don't know what other moves it has. I mean, you've seen it use Imprison, which I don't even know what that does. And it has Psychic. So having a Dark-type Pokemon probably would have been relatively useful. But not much I can do about that. We'll just have Steven stand in there. And then, yeah, we, like I said, once these once these captures are done... I actually don't even really care about capturing them in particular, but... Uh, I might pass them along to... My buds, if they want these Pokemon instead, I'm not going to do much with the the roster here. They're just going to live conveniently tucked on the digital file that they are. And hopefully this uh, Yuxi here will stop being a butt. Because this just isn't exciting. Like, I don't I don't know how any of you feel. I don't feel like it's exciting to watch. I don't feel like it's exciting to, to do. Because for a lot of the time, it's literally just a war of attrition, back and forth. I guess I could buy like timer balls and stuff if I wanted to, to really maximize it. You've got two choices, or three choices, when you do these legendary battles. You can throw a quick ball to start. Throw a quick ball. That, I don't know what the odds of success are for a quick ball, but you can do that. Start with quick ball. Then you can use... I don't even know what happens if you run. I feel like you, you probably lose your shot. But you got Quick Ball, start with that. And if that doesn't work, then you can do Dusk Balls like I'm doing. If those don't work, then you can always wait it out and do a Timer Ball. But I believe it has to be 12 turns. And I mean, we're probably gonna hit the 12 turn mark here shortly. There's a lot of things that will happen once we can uh, get these guys to stop being so gosh dang difficult. I'm probably just going to wind up having my entire team faint eventually. Not that that matters. I'm just here for the catchins. Would really appreciate it to not bust out. Okay, so we've gotten two three shakes. And I would love to whittle it down a little bit more, but I know that the moment I do that, I'm going to accidentally kill it. I don't really have any Pokemon on my team that has a minimal enough of an impact here that wouldn't kill it. You can almost guarantee any move I do for any Pokemon. You want to have a Pokemon that has like maybe like Ball Swipe. That should leave any enemy Pokemon with at least one HP. So, you know, realistically speaking, that's the perfect way to do these types of fights. You will have the best chance at catching it. It'll only have one HP, and if it has a status effect, in the case, I feel like Paralysis is probably the best one to use because it does fulfill the need for a status effect, whereas, like, putting it to sleep is good, but putting it to sleep, it'll wake up from that eventually, and you'll just have to keep doing it over and over again. Poison would slowly kill it. Burning would slowly kill it. Freezing it, I don't know how reliable that is, or it, how to even, like get that to happen okay so that's three three shake ones already this yuxi is really getting under my gosh dang skin hopefully this won't use all my dusk balls because i have to catch the other two it's a bit of a butt yeah these fights i don't know like maybe maybe they like registered like more to me as a kid, but like I do these now and I'm just like, eh, it's very samey. I don't, I don't know how much of this is fun. Like you're basically competing against the computer. It's just rolling numbers to decide if your number one time is going to be higher than the number for the enemy Pokemon. Come on. There we go. Okay. So that's one. Like I said, I'll clue everybody back in. When I catch the other two, it'll just be at the end 
So here's Yuxi, the knowledge Pokemon. Known as the being of knowledge, it is said that it can wipe out the memory of those who see its eyes. There's plenty of things that I have seen that I would love to not remember. So, okay. So there's that. I'm going to head on to the next lake. I don't remember if I'm going to do Verity or Valor, but I'll catch you at the next one. Okay, everybody, we are at Lake Verity. Here is fight number two. This is Mesprit. Which I guess is, I don't know if this is like the leader of the, oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, thanks Professor Rowan. Thank you for admitting, he's being so vulnerable right now, good for you. Are you just about to leave or are you going to do something? Oh, okay, so Mesprit is a wandering Pokemon. Wow, that is just basically him telling us to do more work. Did that add to our Pokedex? I bet it didn't. I did not know that, that was going to be a thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're only missing the last three. No, it did register. Okay, well, I'm not actually going to go catch Mesprit then. Never mind. That actually really saved me a moment. Thanks, game. So you can go catch Mesper if you want to. You'll have that little, uh... You'll have that little interaction, I guess. So we're actually going to head left. Because I want to go to, finally, Lake Valor, the one that was exploded by Team Galic Galactic. I can't even talk. I got Arceus on the brain. That's Team Galaxy. So we'll head back. Very exciting. One last jaunt. It would be bittersweet, but uh, 40 episodes of Pokemon's a lot. And I will... I might leave it open because there is an opportunity for other potential things to be shown that I don't really have access to yet. I got some other work to do on other games first. You play through Arceus and you do a lot of work on that. It does unlock some things for this one. It's kind of a neat tandem, but we're not there yet. And oh my gosh, oh, time for this. It's amazing though that the lake is somehow magically unexploded. I don't really know how that works. So I guess you get to see two of the battles here today. Very exciting. They're almost going to be identical. I'm going to do the exact same thing because it's easy and I'm a man of convenience. So here we go. Lake Valor. Here's Azelf. The third of the beings. My favorite. And I would say statistically the best of the three. It's definitely the strongest. So hopefully you're ready. It's the least weird looking too. Got its kind of tri-corner hat looking face. I like it. Its eyes though, the eyes always really weird me out, but I'm pretty sure these Pokemon are very heavily built around having special defense. Not special defense, sorry. They have various types of stat advantages based on what they are. They're, they don't have the same stats, bro. What I was trying to say is that Azelf of the three has a lot of special attack, so that's just something to keep in mind. We're gonna paralyze it just like we did with Yuxi. Maybe we'll give it a nice crunch. Hope this doesn't kill it. Ooh, just enough, perfect. My b-hole clenched a little bit when I did that because I was afraid that it was gonna be too much. But this is when you wanna bring in your dark type. In this case, I brought in Suzanne. So we'll definitely have a better chance at catching Azelf. We'll do this and then I'll show you some of the goodies that you get when you get all 150 of the Sinnoh decks. And actually, oh, I, I should have thrown the Quick Ball. So I bought a Quick Ball because I was going to try to show it off, but then I just goofed and didn't do it at all. But anyway, I bought a Quick Ball. I got some Timer Walls too. So you can throw a Quick Ball in turn one, see what you get. After turn 12, if you don't have much success, you can try Timer Balls. And thankfully, it's just back and forth, back and forth. And Azelf's not going to really be able to do anything to us, thanks to our dark priority typing. Very nice. 
Oh, it's got nasty plot, so it's gonna boost its special attack to not be able to attack us. Nice. But yes, because Mesprit decided to fly off, it is a roaming Pokemon, which you'll have to catch it in between different routes. You'll have to find a Pokemon that's not stronger than it. All right, actually, so you would want one that's at least stronger than the Pokemon in the area. So that way, the only Pokemon that you would wind up fighting, if you use a Repel, etc., is going to be Masperit. So that's kind of like a tactic that you could that you've used since back in the day. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so that's all three, sort of two and a half. We've got Azelf now. Wonderful. Not going to use it at all, but we've got it for posterity. I'm going to try to catch all of the legendaries in this game that were expected to be caught. Oh, I didn't even read its dex entry. See, I'm losing my grip. Let's go back and do that. It's only fair. Go back into the Pokédex. And hit up Azelf. Here we go, the Willpower Pokémon. It's known as the Being of Willpower. It sleeps at the bottom of a lake to keep the world in balance. Um, not true. It is definitely not at the bottom of the lake, so I'm not entirely sure what the game is talking about. But we have collected, as you'll see now, 150 sites of Pokemons. So first things first, we're gonna head back to Sand Gem. I do believe we need to present Professor Roan with this information. You don't have to catch all 150 if you're into that. I'm not. I haven't been into that in a long time. I tried. I played Pokemon Diamond, like the original one, and I got close. Like the full expanded dex is like 486 or something like that. I got like 450. So I really, I put in, I put in the work, but it's been some time. But we have seen all 150. We are amazing. We are very epic. We've done more work than Professor Rowan has done. And our reward is a visit from Professor Oak, Samuel Oak, the OG professor. And Professor Oak is clearly a better professor than Rowan as they awkwardly wobble back and forth. And I don't know if they give you anything here. We're gonna find out. Ooh, wow, what a great joke. Ha ha ha. I'm very invested. So we're being congratulated on our excellent work here, filling up all the pages of the Pokedex. And being praised for our efforts feels good. A little validation. The data for the national deck. So this is how you expand it into catching Pokemon from different locations. So we'll get upgraded from the Sinnoh decks. Now we have the national mode, which there's a lot more. I'm not entirely sure exactly how many there are, but we're not going to be doing that anyway, so it doesn't matter. Doing this opens up a new feature to this game called Ramanas, Ramyanas, Rama, Ramananas, Bananas Park. This basically is a location where if you go underground, you collect these plates and you put them on pedestals, you can fight other legendaries from different games. So if you're into that, go for it. I will potentially just walk past it. We wouldn't want to keep Oak in his meeting, so thanks, bud. Adios. So hopefully this interaction has been amazing for all of you. We get the Poke Radar. It helps you to find different Pokemon. You can find Pokemon with good IVs or Shinies if you're into that. So basically that's kind of the most you're gonna get out of this. But there's two final things I wanna show. I don't know if talking to, oh. Okay, I was not expecting to see Roark pop out of the ground. Terrifying. Oh man, thanks. You can do Gym Leader. Rematches if you're in interested in that. You can also refight the Elite Four. So they'll have obviously updated teams with better Pokemon, better stats, yada yada yada, if you're into that. And so Dawn actually wants us to talk to her sister. I believe this will unlock something else as well. Are you Dawn's sister? She's gonna tell us about outbreaks, maybe? Man, you are very excited. Yes, there's many Pokemon. I don't know how many Pokemon are in the national decks, but is many? Oh boy. Let's go ahead and head all the way down. It's gonna sort them by national number now. 
This might actually be all the Pokemon you can possibly find. And I think maybe it just ends with these ones. Obviously there are some Pokemon that extend a little past that that we haven't seen yet, so there will be an availability. Where is her sister at? Don, where's your gosh dang sister? There's only so many houses in this town. Are you her? Hello? Okay. Why? Why are you the way that you are? I thought that, that was it. There's only... Are you in the... Are you in the... In the... Whatever this is called? The lab? I almost said gym. Are you her kid sister? Are you her kid sister? Okay. Anyone. Okay. Well, apparently whatever she wanted us to talk to her kid sister about, we're not doing that. What we do need to do, though, is take a dip, a dip, into the Eterna Forest. You may be asking yourself, d Mike, why? Why are we going to the Eterna Forest? Well, I got something to show you. I don't remember where it is. Where is Eterna City? Where are you? And the forest is... Okay, great. We're doing awesome. Everything is 100% intact. My brain is firing all cylinders. I've not completely forgotten how to play this game. Okay. So you have to do this at nighttime in the Eterna Forest. This is the only way that this works. And this is actually something that I wish they wouldn't have decided to gatekeep between, between behind finding all of these Pokemon. Ooh, there's a ghost Pokemon in the old Gato. Gato is uh, the Francais for cake. And I do love a nice cake. I know Gardenia is a little bit of a punk. She is too afraid to go in here and explore. We're going to do this. These are just a little of the quirky things you can do as part of completing the national decks. Kind of like the more fun things, I would say. Rather than go to the battle frontier and do all this boring garbage. All right, I don't know where this is, but there's something important we gotta do. An old gateau, some old cake. Oh, this is called the old chateau, not the old gateau, I'm dumb. The old chateau. That's still pretty French. All right, so I believe it's in one of these rooms. I got something special for y'all. You're gonna love it. Some plates, if you need something to eat your dinner off of. Actually, it looks like it's in the room right next to me. We're gonna get it poppin'. Here we go. We're gonna save, because this is one and done. You get one shot at this. So there you go. Let's thump that TV, oh yeah. You can only do this once you have all the Pokemon seen in the Sinnoh deck, so keep that in mind. It's a fight, it can only happen at nighttime. With some weird legendary music theme to it. It's Rotom, everybody, oh yeah. Prior to Pokemon Legends Arceus, this is the only way that you could get a Pokemon that was electric and no. Electric Grass. That was the only way you could do it. And it is Electric type. I don't know if I can paralyze it. Probably not. Okay. So this is Rotom. It's not very strong, which is kind of like frustrating that you have to see all 150 Pokemon in the game just to have an opportunity at this at a Rotom. It's not super exciting. I mean, I think Rotom is a great Pokemon. Statistically, not the best, but in general, it's just kind of like, it's pretty cool, you know, having the chance to do this. And there you go, one and done. Its catch rate's pretty high. So not too bad. We did it. It's not a legendary Pokemon. It's not really anything to write home about, but this is the only place you can get one. It's also very cute. Looks like something from Nickelodeon. The Plasma Pokemon. Its body is composed of plasma. It is known to infiltrate electronic devices and wreak havoc. So no, we will just send that to the box for now. Although I do believe this secret key. I don't know where we take it. I think there's a space. I don't know if it's in here or not, but there is a space somewhere. No. This music is very foreboding as I'm just like being a goof and talking over it. 
there is a place somewhere that if you have a secret key, there are various devices, a washing machine, a lawnmower, stuff like that, that if you use a secret key and you have Rotom on your team, you can take it with you. And if you touch those items, Rotom will assume the form, which will change its typing. And I believe it gets like a especially formed move of that typing too, which is kind of neat. And there's probably also ghost Pokemon in here if I'd guess. Some Ghastly if you're interested. Ghastly's great. Ghastly line is one of my favorites. It always made me think back to the original cartoon, the Kanto series of Pokemon, where Ash is in Saffron City or like outside of it, and he goes to fight Sabrina and he just can't get it up, can't figure it out. And so after getting his cheeks clapped, he decides to go and take another approach. Goes to like the Lost Tower or something, and he runs into a bunch of ghost Pokemon. And the way that he's able to interact with them is because he and his Pokemon are hanging out, and a chandelier falls on him and his Pokemon and kills them. So they are able to just kind of hang out, have a good time, and interact with a Haunter, a Ghastly, a Gengar, and that Haunter is eventually what he uses to cheese the fight against Sabrina, because he doesn't actually beat Sabrina, but he makes her laugh so hard that she just gives up and he heals all of her family problems, because that's the, that's the problem for, you know, domestic reconciliation is laughter or something. Anyway, one last thing that I'm going to show in this episode, there's other things you can do once you get to 150. You can actually do this prior to 150, but I wanted to save it. We'll do some exploration of the upper right corner of the map next time. But for now, if you talk to this old man and old woman, you're going to need to have two save files on your device. If you played Let's Go, you can get yourself a Mew. Pretty neat. So let's go ahead and read about Mew's entrance, the new species Pokemon. Because it can use all kinds of moves, many scientists believe Mew to be the ancestor of Pokemon. So there's that. We're not going to give Mew a nickname. And we'll send it to the box. And one last one. If you go here, and you talk to this gentleman. You have to have a sword and shield. File on your switch. You'll get yourself a Jirachi. The wish Pokemon is said to wake up for just seven days every thousand years and use its powers to grant any wish. I wish that this game was more exciting. Okay. So there's that. You'll have those. So next time, we will come back and I will make sure that I do a little bit of exploration. There's a couple more Pokemon, legendary wise, that I'm interested in showing off. Maybe two to three. And then uh, we'll probably call it a temporary wrap on this game to move on to the next project. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D Mike. It's been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.